Hello YouTube, Shadow Hero 90 here. As you can already tell, I've been doing this show for about three years at this point. And in addition to the reasons as to why I do this, which I brought up last year, I am now actually going to state a few more reasons why I do this. One of which is that the, well, the portrayal of men in movies and TV is essentially toxic. And I mean really toxic. Men are... M to be honest, I can't believe that I'm the one of the only very few people who legitimately thinks that this kind of portrayal is not only toxic, but completely unfair. Second of which is the fact that these cartoons are aimed at kids and they, send, they do not send a good message. Most of the time, a lot of these shows are role model shows and the characters exist for the sole purpose to be imitated and yeah, in doing so, you send some really horrible messages. And the, f and the last possible reason I could think of is that this, well, not this, but all these shows are pushing a political agenda. I, well, to be more precise, the political agenda comes in the form of a princess character whose initials are J and B. I'm pretty sure you can figure out who I'm talking about on those initials alone. But yes, a lot of these shows, and to extension, a lot of these role model shows are pushing a political agenda and as a white heterosexual man I really don't want kids being indoctrinated because it could lead to a bad future. In fact, I really hope some really smart boy sees this show and it actually gets him thinking about sexism and it causes him not to be indoctrinated to the feminist agenda that a lot of TV shows, cartoons, and movies are pushing. Especially a certain movie that will go unnamed that used a princess character whose initials are J and B to push their political agenda. As much as this intro actually does seem like a bad rant about the negative presentation of men and boys in the media. This is completely serious and these three reasons I gave for doing the show are actual reasons. Now that being said, if you agree with me on this, that's good. So just Sit back and enjoy the review. Hello, people of YouTube, and welcome to the latest episode of Sexism in Movies and TV. In this episode, I will be attacking the piece of shit known as Ghosts of Girlfriends Past. 
And to be honest, although I did mention this in my top 10 Rule 63 list, link in the description, I'm going to rip it apart again. And this time, I'm going to do it properly. You see, in that video, I made, made an assumption of what I thought this movie would be like. And in doing so, before I recap, I went all the way to the Girls of, Go of Ghosts In that video, I had already made an assumption about what a steaming pile of shit this movie would be. So, in keep so for this episode, I'll be go I'm going to be on the Ghosts of Girlfriends Past Wikipedia page and not here I'm going to give a little recap of my assumption to and then I'm gonna go through it seeing how it stacks up and here's my recap of my assumption this guy is a womanizer and objectifies women and dumps his girlfriend the bitch on the right then he gets visited by the three ghosts of girlfriends past, which I can only assume are these three cunts in the photograph. Then he learns to be a better person, and they get married or something along that line. Now, how about I skim through the Wikipedia page and see how close my assumption was to the actual film knowing the since you can hear the clear confidence in my voice along with the double standard in movies something tells me aside from the confidence that my assumption is dead on okay so the male lead connor me head or something along that line is a photographer and a womanizer he attends his brother's wedding then drunkenly gives a speech about how love isn't real and then the ghosts of girlfriends past come for him wow I really gotta say that my assumption was bad but the film actually makes it worse because apparently he fell in love with this girl um Jenny Periotti and because of that he makes the the drunken speech saying love isn't real this is the kind of thing I'd expect from a feminist who actually fell in love with a man and who she would clearly have feelings for. This seems a lot like proje pro projection, but yeah, in all fairness, I'll just say it. My assumption, this movie is actually far worse than my assumption could have been. Far worse than my assumption ever could have been. Yeah, it's basically everything I said and more. Because apparently he had a crush on her in middle school, but was just nervous to ask her out. I mean, yeah. That is really insulting. Okay, and to continue on how this is a completely negative portrayal of men, this guy is ner 
did basically he then at the end confesses to this woman and she was gonna marry his brother yeah not to mention that his mentor the one who taught him everything he knows about women is a horrible womanizer so horrible that he's willing to hit on a teenage dead girl but they give their male lead Connor such a horrible personality that he has so little respect for anyone or anything else that he's willing to chase after his brother's fiance and they say this is when he learned his lesson and is no longer a womanizer and an asshole who objectifies women I truly don't think that anyone who who worked on this movie even knows how objectification works cuz I'm about to give you a list of women who actually objectify men one every Disney princess two Francine Smith three Deborah Barone and four, Carrie Heffernan, which I'm pretty sure you already know from my top ten worst wives list. And you're probably wondering how that counts as objectification. Well, if men only wanting to date women for sex is objectification, then women only marrying because they want to be taken care of and supported i.e. marrying a man for his money is also objectification and this is where the review comes to an end and I'm pretty sure this bitch only even dated him and dumped his brother because he's a better provider than his brother. That is real objectification.